This winter we ordered a post and beam barn kit on the internet and today we're gonna do a factory tour of where it was built. We're gonna go check it out. Yeah. yeah. Hey Al. Nice to meet you, Dom. I'm very excited to give you the tour. We're excited for the tour. <laughs> Girls ready to learn? Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready. Come check on in. So this is where you guys take all the phone calls. So this is the the call center. Yep. This is the main operation. This is the face of the company here. So what they do here is sales and service. Uh, so when we are working on the phones here, this is where your calls are coming in. So now this building right here is what we have, but this is the 14 footer. This is the 14 by 21 bay garage with the overhang attached. We offer it in several different sizes and you got the 16 by 30, right? Yes. Yeah, and you've got two overhangs? Two overhangs. So you're gonna have one on both sides? Yes. Yeah, that's yep. gonna be, be a good be, size. That's gonna yeah. be a good size building. This is where the operation begins. So what they're doing here is pulling the raw material. They're pre-kitting it before it goes to the saw for uh, processing. So before it can go over to the CNC saw, you gotta get all the lumber pulled in order to match the cutlass. So what they're doing is running down there and stacking the lumber so when the sawyer gets to it, it'll be in order for them to be able to cut it and stage it down onto the pallet. Uh, I'll show you that as we move through, it'll become more apparent. This here is very important. This is the support section of the operation. So this is where everything begins. So they pull the lumber and then this guy is over here get the rest of the kit together. I'll show you where the one has the envelope and the color coding. And it tells you, it shows you exactly where they are on the in the production facility. So moving through, it tells you the job name. Ah, oh, this is where they make the pallets. So we use hardwood on the top. But everything else is just the hemlock. Gotcha. So everything that we put together here. All the millwork has to get packaged so it doesn't we have less damage. Yep. This is the hardware room. The hardware room has all the fasteners door latches, screws. What he's making here are these special stairs that go in with our timber frame packages. These stairs are thick. These are three by 12 that we're using. Yep. So this is very fat hemlock wood that we're using. So these stair treads are designed to be, if you'd like to leave those exposed when it's done. It gives it a much beefier, heavier look. Nice oversized, good feel for when you uh, have those stairs exposed on the finished product. Now what are these ones for? Is this for a barn or a garage? Or? Yeah, or a Vermont cabin. Vermont cabin. So those are the timber frame. That's where you have the 8x8 with the two mortise and tenon. And I'll show you that here as we're cutting them. Awesome. So you put your tin right in there and just snip it right off. I've never seen one of those before. It's like a you big giant. Want, you don't want to get caught in there. <laughs> it's like a big giant paper cutter. That's it. <laughs> Feel like we're at home with the mud. <laughs> We're turning it into a sauna, so it's all insulated, protected. The interior has been finished all in cedar. It's got the little bench. We've got an electric heater. It's going to the electrician's going to hook up in there. Um, this is going to be sent to a, a folks just down the road here to, to use as their personal sauna. So you don't do this all the time? Is it a special order? It is a special order, but we've built many saunas in the past. We've done them both in gas, wood, and electric. Uh, most commonly, it's uh, wood. I see your gears are spinning, Gina. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they cut us so good for so many things. It smells awesome. Mm. Now you're going to want a sauna. So what you're looking at here is our Vermont cabin. It goes out with eight by eights. It's a very beefy look. 
so when you're finished, you can get a nice six inch wall and still have a nice exposed inch and a half or so of meat left over to see that from the inside. Now our Vermont cabin does go out with a true mortise and tenon as you see here. So this is a tenon here and a mortise would look uh, something where it would be a pocket. You slip it in, it would get drilled and then pegged. Uh, we've got one on display we can show you. Awesome. Yeah, it's a combination firewood and storage. These are our heavy timbers. Have one 20 foot 6x6 six six skids. We got the 16 footers, four by sixes, and then we keep quite a bit of treated lumber on hand as well. So this is these would be like what your the bigger houses or structures would get built on. Yeah, these are already been pre-cut at the angle, so yep. they're ready to go. Okay. That sawdust would come up through the pipe here and feed into the sawdust house. That chamber there would. Keep so where do you get all this lumber from? Well, there's a good chance that it might have come from your property as a, it all comes local. We buy it from the lumber brokers. Yep. So we're never really quite sure where it comes from, but I am can confirm that it came from here in the Northeast. Uh, anywhere from New York all the way over to Maine, it, it comes in about a truck and a half, about every day and a half. In wow. The truck road. It's kind of neat to know that part of our wood from our land could be in the building that we're going to be building. Right this. here. This this one right here could have been your tree right. on your property. <laughs> that could have been some of the trees we had cut down. It's pretty wild to think, but awesome at the same time. Well, we deal with a lot of the largest sawmills in, in New England. Look, there's our 20 by 30, that Vermont cabin we keep coming back to. It's very popular. It is a sheathing that they would use for the roof. Uh, so rather than using plywood, we're using the the natural uh, barn board here, uh, the sheet, the roof. Yeah, jump right on there so we can get a picture. Mm -hmm. I bet. Does the horn work? Beep. <laughs> now I'm going to show you the cut room here. This is where we produce the kits. We have two lines, and each line is cutting kits here. The cubers, what they're doing is stacking them and putting the labels on. This is with the end of the line. Come on up here and I'll show you the CNC. So this is where our kit came out of. You see the two screens? They're touch screen. So the Sawyer is sitting here touching the screen to be able to follow that cutlass. The raw material, which has already been pulled, pre-pulled, and brought over to it, and it's in order. So as he's putting the material up, he is processing it to meet the cutlass tier. Now the saw runs, it's an upcut saw, CNC, which means it's computer controlled. And what it does is it moves the stop, the stop is a tiger stop automatically, so there's no tape measure being used. So there's a lot less for uh, human error. It's accurate within a sixteenth of an inch. The blade coming up out of here is a 24 inch blade that comes up out of the table here. This is the clamp that comes down and holds the lumber in place. Now the table spins, so this table inside here rotates to match the angle of whatever it is that you're cutting. It's set at a 90 now, but as soon as you hit a 45 or the pitch of the roof, it'll slide over here and go ahead and lock in. It only takes a moment to do uh, as he sets up for his next cut.
have a tailing section. That tailing section would put on the layouts for each piece where they connect together and do any of the final cutting that this big saw is enabled to do. These are our raptor patterns here. We've got them all in steel. So it gives you, for every design, it'll give you the wall heights and pitch of the roof. And then you can just grab one of these and trace it out. We do board and batten and cut our own battens here. And this gang saw here is what does it. Uh, so it's like a big table saw with a bunch of ganged up blades. And it just takes the blade, the lumber, and feeds it right through. So for these, come out of there. several different checkpoints all the way through the operation. One of the quality controls is right at the end for the final inspection at the shipping station. I'll show you that. Now this is sitting on the scale here. You can see it right over here. Oh, yeah. Jumping around. That weighs 3,700 pounds. That's about an average one. So what it is is that we protect the top with a piece of layer of plastic, and then we're putting the netting on so the lumber can breathe. And so that'll be protected and set up so you're not losing any pieces during transportation. But what you receive your package, what you're going to find is that these tags are on there, and each one has the job name, the color code, which tells you where it fits into the building. Green would be the siding. The size of the wood, it's a pea, piece of pine. It's a 1 by 12. It's 74 inches long. It's a piece of siding. It's got a uh, tracking number on it, and it tells you uh, what project this is, fits into. Now that pallet is not part of the project, so that'll be left over when you're done. The pallet can come in direct contact with the ground. It can be pushed, pulled, dragged, or shoved from any side. The building has been stacked in order, so as you begin to build, you can pull off the top and go ahead and begin building. Now what we always recommend for uh, frustration purposes, <laughs> to limit that, is to lay out all of the pieces, longest to shortest. The first color you'll need is blue. So take a look, grab all of the blue ones, don't lose these labels, that's a big deal. Take your lumber and lay it out on the ground longest to shortest with the labels all the same direction. Now whoever has the least amount of experience should be reading the instructions and feeding the assembler. So the biggest uh, concern or the slowdown comes from finding the part. So if you have all your parts laid out ahead of time and whoever is reading the instructions is feeding the assembler, it goes a lot smoother. Gotcha. Your hardware is in there, your roofing, your material for your siding, your doors are pre-made, uh, your windows are in there. You'll pull out your hardware package with all of your door, your nails and screws, and then you can begin building. Al, as a special thank you, I wanted to give you this here for your for your subscribers. It's a promo code for 10% off. Thank you. That 10% off is good until June 30th, 2019, and it's Yabro170. Awesome. We'll have links in the description down below you can click on, and I'll leave the promo code down there also. What are you doing? Tanner wants to go up. Yeah, go ahead. What was the name of this cabin again, this Dom? Is Vermont Cabin. So it is the largest design that we offer. And it has several different sizes, starting at 20 by 30, going all the way up to 24 by 40. We can easily get this over 2,000 square feet and adding some overhangs and some of the different options, such as these dormers that we have here. This is a shed dormer here that raises the roof, lets it a tremendous amount of uh, light and space. So if you wanted to use this as an upstairs bedroom of sort, then that space would be allowed to do that. Uh, we also have the doghouse dormers on this side. Those doghouse dormers go ahead and break up the roof lines. 
again, letting in more light. Yeah. six inch wall with high R value so you can use any type of insulation you'd like uh, you could even use something more alternative like cotton wool hemp uh, you could use structural insulated panels the sips could uh, fit on there you could also use traditional fiberglass rocks wool so a lot of different options exist uh, depending on your budget and your R value comfort level that you're looking for the pegs have been left out that's an aesthetic so if you'd like to cut those off Flush, you can do that. I like that. That is what's holding it all together. Got the natural skin post. Go check that playhouse out. And hook it right to the family car. <laughs> yeah. Craft room. She's got, I like, she's got good enough. You got an awful big craft room here. <laughs> Fully assembled so we can bring it over to the road and set it on your property on a prepared site. Don't tell her that. <laughs> Crack room, here we come. Very nice. Just drag it around. You could. That's a barrel arch. And then we've also gone ahead and put the natural skin posts on. Gives it that nice earthy feel. Yeah, definitely. We actually do sell a lot of outhouses. This one is set up so it is just a storage shed. So if you'd like to put in a composting toilet, this would be a better choice. This one on this side is a functional one. So it's got the, the bench seat and the hopper. So you can flip that lid right open if you'd like. It's got a funnel. Oh, yep. So it sits over a hole. I always prefer to put the clear panels on, lets in all the light. Yeah. No need to be dark and dingy in there. <laughs> no. I appreciate you coming to see me today. Thanks, Al. Thanks for having us. It was very good to meet you. Nice meeting you too, Dom. I'm excited now yeah. to get home and You're stop building. Ready to start building? I'm ready to stop building. I've been ready since it got dropped off. <laughs> We've just been buried in a little bit too much snow to start. Well, I'm happy to have you over here, and I'm excited to see how the project goes. Thank you. And when I get my sauna order. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't have brought Gina, now no. she wants to sauna. <laughs> Olivia thinks she needs a craft house. Uh-oh, we're going to have a lot of Jamaican cottages on the property, huh? <laughs> That's great. Thank, Thank you. you. And just like that, we made it home. We saved you guys the five hours of driving we did today. <sighs> now we got to check on the goats, see how they're doing, and collect some eggs. I got an email, we got our building permit back and approved, so the location of the barn is good to go. We're waiting on a few more things to start the process of building. Hopefully we'll hear back about them this weekend. So when this video goes out, then we just gotta wait probably another week or two once all the road bands come off the roads and we can start trucking in some gravel. You survived, Blossom. What are you doing there, Hope? I didn't know if we'd come home to babies there, Willow. I was hoping we weren't. You didn't have your babies while we were gone, did would you? That wasn't nice. That wasn't nice to hope. Huh? What are you doing, huh? We're not gonna leave you back here, nope. We're just getting some hay. And then you are coming out with the hay, come on. Oh, you girls survived good. Yes. Come on. We'll give you some more water.
What are you doing? Come on. Pluto doesn't enjoy riding in the car. She'd much rather stay home and have the run of the house with nobody around. You guys following me? enjoyed the factory tour of Jamaica Cottages as much as we did. We had such a good time there. I wanted to thank Dom, the owner of Jamaica Cottages. Thank you, Dom, for letting us come over and doing the tour. It's always fun. I just like being able to go and check things out and seeing how everything works and seeing how everything is made. I'm a visual learner, so if I can see everything, parts and pieces in front of me, it clicks for me. So that was really awesome and encouraging to be able to walk around, see the whole process start to finish, how it starts off. And then some of the projects that they're building there on site, we ordered, I believe it's called a pre-cut kit, something like that. We got the single bay garage with two overhangs. We got the pre-cut kit. You can get pre-cut kits, you can get just the posts or you can get some structures fully built already and then they just haul them over the road and deliver them and set them on the ground for you and you're ready to go. So they offer quite a different array of buildings which is pretty neat. We kind of fell in love with that Vermont cabin. That's a really nice looking house. Good thing we already got ours built. But I'm gonna have links in the description down below for Jamaica Cottages and I'll have the promo code for 10% off that Dom gave us. Thank you, Dom. We're looking forward for this weather to break so we can start getting some gravel trucked in and we can start building the barn. I'm gonna have a link for a video right here of when they dropped off our barn building and we'll see you guys right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.